Hello everyone, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I'm going to do a calculator tutorial video with you on the Texas Instruments TI-34 MultiView calculator. This is a wonderful scientific calculator that sold really well when it came out and that's because it's easy to use and because it is a great first scientific calculator for high school students. And one of the main features that makes it so great is called math print, which I'm going to get into in this video. This calculator uses an equation operating system which lets you plug in whole expressions into the calculator which you see completely on the LCD screen and then it lets you press enter at the very end so you can evaluate whole expressions. Contrast that with the algebraic operating system for older calculators and for your desktop stock calculator or your iPhone stock calculator. Those evaluate single algebraic operations at a time. Sometimes you have to plug in the number first and then it evaluates the algebraic operation afterwards and you only see one result at a time from one operation at a time. Now if you have giant calculations that can get quite laborious and you can sometimes get lost. And so equation operating system allows for more complex calculations to be done more easily. That's what type of calculator we have here. So to turn the calculator on, we press the on button. And you notice that there's this little LCD uh, blinking rectangle at the top left of the screen. The screen is much bigger than one row. It's longer than one row of calculation. And so you can have up to four calculations or five calculations in a row showing on the screen. Now, Let's say we wanted to test this calculator's algebraic operation functionality, make sure it does order of operations correctly. And so I'm going to test that by doing 7 times 8 plus 3. Notice how it has not evaluated a single thing yet. It is letting me finish putting the expression in before it evaluates. So what we would expect to occur here is that 7 times 8 is done first, which would give us 56. And then it would add 3, so we would get 59. So let's press Enter, and we get 59, which is correct. Now, there are lots of cool features on scientific calculators, such as this, that allow you to re-edit your calculations. Now, in order to do that, we are going to have to repopulate the screen with the calculation, and that is done with a special button that I want to show you right now. This button here, the second button, allows for twice as many uh, functions on these calculators because the second button will activate the function that is written above each button in gray. So for example if I press the on button after I press the second button it will turn the calculator off. Okay let me show you. Second on and the calculator is now off. And I press on again and it comes back. So let's say I wanted to re-edit that previous calculation so that the 7 was made negative. Okay, now what I'm going to do to repopulate the screen with that expression is press second, enter. Aha, there it is. So the calculator has a memory and it can store your previous calculation, which is really nice. What you do to re edit that calculation is you press the upward arrow in my little arrow cursor buttons and then press the up arrow again and you get to the actual expression. If you press enter, it will now populate the next row on the calculator with that expression and you can move the cursor to the left and start editing things. What we wanted to do was to make 7 negative. So you put the cursor over the 7, so the 7 is blinking in and out, and you press the following. Second, delete. Above delete you'll see the word insert, which allows you to now insert a calculation. So this calculation I'm going to change to negative 7 times 8 plus 3. So, you see how 7 is now blinking in and out, but it's not a giant box covering it? That lets you know you're about to insert something before the next button you press. We'll insert that before. So I'm going to press this symbol here. This means negative. I can negate a number with this symbol as opposed to the minus symbol, which subtracts. Those are two different buttons now. Okay, now that I press that negative, now I have negative 7 times 8 plus 3. Notice how 7 is still blinking that same way. I could put as many things as I want, and they'd all be put in before 7. Now let's say I want to delete. Notice how when I move the cursor, then it moves off of 
the insert feature. Say I want to delete all those extra digits that I just added. I will just not press second delete, but just delete. And it deletes them one at a time going to the right. Okay. So that's the insert and delete feature. Now that I have negative 7 times 8 plus 3, I would expect a different result. Negative 53. So things are a little jumbled, a little close together, which they fixed in a later version of the multi-view calculator, but you can fit up to five rows of calculations, excuse me, four rows, it looks like, of calculations on one screen, which is kind of nice. You can see what you previously did. And I can go backwards up to many rows of calculations. And I made these in other runs of this video. And I'm going way back in my history which is awesome because now it's like a continuous row of calculations. Now we're gonna talk about how this calculator does really interesting things with fractions and decimals. I believe it's part of the multi-view trademark. Let's say I wanted to do a calculation that resulted in a decimal. How about uh, seven times eight, and then I'm gonna divide by six, three, okay? I'm going to divide that by 3. So you'd expect to get for it to do the multiplication first and then the division second. And we're going to get a decimal for that. Aha! There's the decimal. Now, this calculator has this neat feature where it will let me see this calculation as a fraction instead of a decimal. And how do I toggle back and forth between fraction and decimal? I press this button here, this little double arrow button, and it will re revert back to a fraction. Now if you look, we see there 18 and a little symbol and then 2 over 3. That means 18 and 2 thirds. Okay, so that's a mixed number. Let's try another one that gives a proper fraction. How about 3 divided by, now if you want your calculation to show you uh, a denominator that has multiple numbers in it and to do it correctly you need to put that entire denominator in parentheses if you're multiplying multiple things in it. So 3 over 7 times 8 would look like this. Okay, now I have a proper fraction. This decimal is less than 1 and I press this button and I get 3 over 56. And I could toggle back to the decimal and back to the fraction and back to the decimal. It's quite a neat feature. Now, you may want to see your expressions in a slightly different way. Maybe you want to see them in a way that's more akin to the way you see them in math textbooks. And there's a feature for that. So I'm going to clear this out and I'm going to show you a new button, Mode. Okay, it's this button right next to the second on the right. Mode allows you to adjust some of the settings in the calculator. Now it's not very easy to see, but the fourth one down here is an important one, and that is classic versus math print. Now on these calculators, the mode selected is the one that's highlighted in black. If you want to select the other option on that row, you would move your blinky cursor over to the other option, now it's blinking, and you press enter, now it's gonna select that mode. Now this mode is called math print. It's gonna allow you to see these calculations in a slightly different way. Okay, so let's do the previous calculation again. To get out of mode, I press second mode, which will quit me out of the menu that I have it to be in, and go back to the regular screen. Let's try that calculation again. It was uh, 3 divided by, parentheses, 7 times 8. Okay, it shows me the decimal, but now watch as I press the fraction button, fraction to decimal button. Look at that. Now it's showing me 3 over 56 as a standard fraction that you'd see in a calculator. Okay, cool. And um, how would it show me the mixed number version? Well, let's try. We're going to do 7 times 8. Now notice how it skipped to the next row when I started doing another calculation. Divided by 3. If I press enter, I'll get the decimal version. And I'll toggle to the fraction version, and you can see a standard mixed number like you'd expect in a book. So now I'd like to show you how this calculator does square roots differently depending on which mode you're in. 
So I'm going to go clear this out and I'm going to go back to mode. And I'm going to switch back to the classic view rather than the math print textbook style view. Second mode to quit. Now I'm going to do a square root. Let's say the square root of 86. Now classic view does a little square root symbol and then a parenthesis. And you plug in what you want to take the square root of and you close the parentheses to show that that is all I'm going to take the square root of. I press enter and get the typical result for square root of 86. Now if I go to math print mode instead and do the same calculation watch what happens. Look at how already it's different. The square root is over the entire number, which is kind of nice because that's how you'd see it in a textbook. You do not need to close the parentheses this time. Now I press this arrow over here and that stopped the square root from continuing on. So it let it know that I was done and this is always going to take the square root of. We get the same result. What if I wanted to do a higher degree order root, like the cube root or something like that? There's this little button, I will zoom in and show you, above the caret that allows you to do higher order square roots. It's X, it's got this little X with the square root symbol. And so I'm going to show you how that works. What I'm going to do is press the number three first and then press second caret. And now you could see the little three has been elevated to a superscript above the radical. So that means cube root. So let's try the cube root of something that has a nice cube root, 27. Now if you forget to press the arrow to get out of the square root, it will still evaluate what you wanted through cube root of 27, which is 3. It will forgive you for that. So you can do higher order roots and the square root. What about exponents? How are exponents done on this calculator? Something you might need to know how to do. They're done with the caret button. Now, there's a shortcut for the most commonly used one, which is the square. And so what we do here, let's say I wanted to do 5 squared. I would just press the number 5 and then that x squared button. And it makes 5 squared. Press enter. You get 25. But what if you wanted a higher degree than 5? I mean, higher degree than 2. How about 5 to the 5th? You press 5 caret. And look, it raises it to the exponent position when you're in math print mode. And you can press your exponent. Math print mode is very nice for this reason. Now notice that uh, the, uh, the cursor is still elevated. So I could continue to add numbers in the exponent region. Now you are limited in this calculator's functionality. You can't do every single size number calculation you need. But uh, the ones for the basic math, you need an algebra 1, algebra 2, geometry. This works great. And you press enter. 3,125. Now, another thing we can go over is scientific notation. For example, 5 times 10 to the 6. Let's say I want to do 5 times 10 to the 6. I write 5 times, and then I use this button here, which says times 10 to the n. Okay, what it does for you if you do, if you put the times is it'll add another times, which will give you a syntax error because you have two of the same operations in a row. Okay, so we need to avoid putting a, a, a times there because this button takes care of that for us. To get out of this, if you do a syntax error, press clear and it'll go back to the previous calculation and it'll actually put the cursor at the error. And so I will press delete because I had too many multiplication symbols and uh, press the arrow until I get in front if I want to add some more which I don't in this case I'm just going to do 5 times 10 to the 6 and it will show you that result which is 5 million now this looks a little different in classic mode if you're in classic mode 5 times 10 to the 6 will have a different look to it Okay, see how the 10 is big and the exponent has to be symbolized by a caret. That is classic mode. But you get the same result. So these are how scientific notation numbers are done. Pi gets its own button on this calculator. It's right here. And uh, if I press that button, pi, 
it'll populate the screen with a symbol that looks a lot like pi. If I press enter, it will give me the first couple digits of pi. This calculator floating point uh, notation style, so that means you can move the decimal anywhere along the digits, it shows how many digits? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten digit calculators are your basic scientific calculator accuracy. So nine decimal places, ten total digits. Now let's say I want to do some calculation with pi. I'm going to move back into math print mode. So we're working in the mode that you will most likely use in this calculator. Let's say I wanted to find the area of a circle with a radius of six. Well, as we know, um, the formula for area is pi times the radius squared, pi r squared. So I can type pi times six and then press the square button. Now watch what happens. I get 36 pi. It gives me my answer in terms of pi, which a lot of your geometry textbooks ask you to write your answers in, which is great. You might not want to see it that way and you might want a decimal. Maybe your book requires you to write it and round the answer to the nearest tenth or something like that. You can press the toggle switch and it will revert to the decimal version. So it'll multiply in that pi by your answer. So you get 113.1 if you're asked to round to the decimal, uh, the first decimal place or the tenths place. All right, guys, I got two more things I want to show you today. First, I want to show you how trig functions work in this calculator. Uh, so if I want to activate a trig function, I will have to press second pi because the value above the pi is trig. And so that's how I activate my trig functions. Now there are six options here, sine, cosine, tangent, sine inverse, cosine inverse, and tan inverse. Okay, so we have all the trig functions and their inverses. Let's say I want to do the sine of pi. Okay, it's a common calculation. You notice in this menu that each option has a number next to it. You can either press that number or you can highlight that number and press enter. So I want to do the sine of pi. Now, if you want to do the sine of an angle in radians, you need to be in radian mode. If you look at the top of the screen on the top right, you will see once this, ah, zooms in and focuses DEG that means degree so I'm in degree mode when that is highlighted and I don't want to be in degree mode if I'm plugging in radians into a trig function so we go to mode the very first menu item is DEG or RAD you will switch over to RAD for radians okay now it says on the top of the screen now that I'm in radian mode it says RAD Okay, that's how I know. It's for my benefit. All right. So let's evaluate the sine of pi. Zero, as we'd expect. Okay? So that's how the trig functions work. And you can do inverse trig functions as well. And they work just the same way. Um, let's say I wanted to do a reciprocal trig function, which is not the same as an inverse trig function, such as cosecant, which is the reciprocal of sine. Okay, I'm going to do the cosecant of pi because I know it is undefined. I want you to see what the calculator shows you if you're doing that. So in order to get cosecant of pi, I have to do 1 over sine of pi as it is defined. And so I will press 1 first, then I will press second scientific notation button. I can see above that a little 1 over x. Now, it's going to populate my fraction with whatever my previous entry was in the denominator. And so what I do to edit the denominator to be what I want is I press the left arrow. That's going to move me downstairs. I put it right over the one and I press either delete. And now I have nothing down there and I will put in what I want. Or I could press second insert to insert something in front of the one. But this time I don't want a one. So I deleted it, and now I'm going to press second pi to get to trig. I press number one, or enter right now, because it's highlighted for sine, and then I press pi. I'm still in radian mode. RAD is still highlighted. And I close the parenthesis, and I can either stay down in the denominator, or press the arrow to get out of the denominator. Both of these, if I press enter, will give me the same result. 
Divide by zero, error. Since sine was zero, cosecant of pi would be one over zero, which is not allowed in math. You can't divide by zero. Divide by zero, error. And this is the last thing I'm gonna show you. To do a calculation, and then I wanna use that answer in another calculation. Well, this is great. So let's try seven times eight minus three. Okay, now I like that result, but I wanna do something else to it. Okay, let's say I'm gonna multiply that by pi, for example. Well, here's the great thing. If I start pressing something, like another operation, it'll populate the screen with that previous answer. Okay, if I wanted to multiply it by pi, I'd just press pi now and press enter, which is great. But there's another way to get the previous answer, and that is to press second and then the minus sign. ANS is written in gray above the minus sign. So I can press second minus sign, and then I have just my previous answer populated. Now I can do whatever I want to it. For example, let's say I wanted to square root my answer. I could go here and press the square root button and then press second minus sign. Now I'm square rooting my previous answer, which is a decimal. And if there's a fractional equivalent to any decimal, if I press this toggle button, it'll go back and forth between the fraction and the decimal. But I know this one didn't have a decimal because it was 56 pi. 56 pi is an irrational number when square rooted and it is an irrational number without a square root because pi is an infinite transcendental number. All right, so as you can see, it toggles back and forth between the same decimal. But also notice how it actually stores a few more digits in toggle mode. You can see now I have uh, many, many more, maybe like four or five more digits available. So this calculator, guys, is awesome. It's a great start for those in algebra who need a scientific calculator. It can really work through Math 1 and Math 2 courses if you're using a Common Core curriculum, or it can go all the way through Algebra 2 if you're using Standard Curriculum. It's a great calculator. I couldn't recommend it enough. All right, guys, thanks for watching this calculator tutorial video. I hope it helped you. This is Falconator, signing out.